Hey everybody, well our days in the shark cage are quickly going to come to a close. Was looking at the calendar, I got work that needs to get done here and I don't have a lot of time to get it done, relatively speaking. Uh, I need to finish up reducing the inventory here as much as I possibly can so that when I pack this stuff up it will take up less space. My plan is that we're going to get a pod. No, not that kind of pod because orcas have a nasty habit of eating the livers of great white sharks. I'm talking about this kind of pod. And um, pack up the shark cage into a pod that way I can plan it out. I'm not, it's just one more thing that I can plan and there's too many unknown variables right now. So anything that I can turn from an unknown to a known really helps. Plus I can have the pod transported up to North Carolina and they will store it for me for a fee of course, but it's not an exorbitant fee all things considered. And then when I'm ready for it, I can have it delivered to the new location so I can unpack it. That's my plan. I think it makes a lot of sense for the current situation. Here's our timing. The house goes on the market the 1st of April. Our real estate agent is relatively confident that we'll be able to sell it uh, pretty quickly. So, uh, of course, it all depends on pricing and those kind of things. But 1st of April, the house goes on the market. The lease here expires the end of May. So I think what I'm gonna do, uh, kind of wrestling around with the timing of the pod. I'm either gonna have the pod delivered mid to late April, no later than the 1st of May. That way if the house does sell pretty quickly, I'm not dealing with you know, being out of a house and having to pack up here and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I might even move, do that a little bit sooner because you know, that's something that I can get done earlier. Uh, one way or another, I have to pay for the month of May. So, you know, what, you know, whenever I get that done, I might as well get it done. So, uh, in the meantime, I need to get to work here, getting some stuff out of here. Uh, and, uh, then we will see, you know, what size pod we need to have. I'm thinking a 16 footer. Is it a 16 foot or an 18 footer? I don't remember, I gotta check again. It's either a 16 or an 18 foot pod that'll hold 10,000 pounds, which should be sufficient because I'm gonna get rid of most of the really heavy stuff. I'm not gonna move that. So that's where we're at. Just thought you all might be interested in, you know, a little update on what's happening with the shark cage and how the move is progressing. Now, let's get on to scrapping something. What do you say? Cisco! Nice device here. SG200-26 26 port gigabyte smart switch. Yeah, baby. We've got the number one Phillips head. No screws there. I know a lot of you ask me why I don't try to sell these things. This particular client is very adamant about me not reselling anything that I get from him. So that is a big part of it for a lot of the material I get. Uh, but the other part of it is, um, the, in order to really be successful in the reselling game, you've got to really pay attention to that. 
you be you have to be up on it um, whether it's marketplace or eBay you know it's just something that you really need to be doing regularly and it's not my gig uh, the scrapping and recycling is my gig so uh, it uh, it just comes down to what uh, do I want to spend my time on so now when we get up to North Carolina things may change it's different market up there different set of circumstances up there so we may rethink the whole business model well let me clarify that we are going to rethink the business model because I'm doing that right now <laughs> um, but uh, you know what that's going to become I'm not exactly sure so here's a power supply this power supply has a nice coil right there that will come off pretty easy and in addition to that coil which we just unwind that copper so that's uh, there you go that's an easy one there you go now this part is ferrite that goes in your little metal bits that's number two copper this one also has this uh, type of coil in it that should come off pretty easily here some stuff in the way of getting a good grip on it but that's all right we can still do that all right so now that's going to go in my low grade board pile and then this I can bust the ferrite core out and then just pull the wire off of there number two insulated copper wire we have a nice board here we're going to talk about grading in just a minute once I get all of these 5,000 screws removed. I wasn't really 5,000 screws. You know I was... How many screws was it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 14. 14 screws! So... Next, we pull off the heat sinks. Oops, took the chip off of that one. Aluminum heat sinks. Another aluminum heat sink. So we have a nice potential uh, telecom board here but we have a lot of junk that's hanging up here that is downgrading the board well we know how to fix that don't we So grinders come in really handy for doing that and then if you can put it in a vise you're good to go. Now for those of you that are not familiar, th these are not ICs so uh, these are called Dallas switches or comparable to Dallas switches. Uh, they're not anything to get terribly excited about. They actually lower the value on board so that's what you're going for for the maximum value on this board. Nice gold cornered BGA. We've got a lot of flat pack IC kind of things, other ICs gold corner or gold edge crystal oscillator there there's another oscillator i'm not worried about that one board being broken off that happens sometimes that won't be a big deal 
and just some very tiny components on the back. Quick and easy upgrade, if you wanna learn more about how to identify boards and how to prepare them for sale, check out these links that are coming up here. And the round one in the middle, that's to help you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Take care, everybody.